is Gail Boyle, and it's my pleasure to have been asked to present at today's webinar. My task is to provide a very brief overview of the changing relationship that museums have had with archaeological archives over time, the challenges that this has posed, and some of the more recent initiative that SMA and others have been delivering to address them. Before I go further, for those who are not familiar with SMA, the Society is recognised by Arts Council England as the Subject Specialist Network for British Archaeology. With about 250 members in the UK and beyond, it's been fully constituted for over 40 years, and although initially set up to provide the profession with a political voice, it is just as much interested today in promoting best practice. As I shall explain, we also work collaboratively with a wide variety of other sector-wide organisations. The contents of archaeological archives are hugely variable, dependent on when they were excavated, and many museums hold records from sites explored before modern fieldwork techniques were developed. Their content will be affected by, amongst other things, the period and responsibility for production, standards at that time, research agendas, investigative techniques and the resources available. These photographs show the excavation of King's Western Roman Villa near Bristol in the late 1940s. It was discovered by two teenage amateur archaeologists whilst a new post-war housing estate was being built. Clearly at this time, archaeology was not bound by the planning controls and processes that we experience today. But equally, the quality of what was produced as an archive was also nothing like we would expect to see deposited at a museum now. This site wasn't excavated by experienced professional archaeologists and there were no standards that could be applied to what was produced. With regard to the growing need to professionalise practice, an important challenge was to ensure that archives were compiled in a way that they provided detailed records of sites which would themselves be destroyed by excavation, and crucially so that these records could be re-examined in the future. Similarly challenging was the practical deposition process to museum stores in ways that enabled them to be curated in the most efficient way. The need for standardisation came about initially in response to the quantity of excavated material produced by rescue excavation in the 1960s and 70s, but the need for best practice guidance became more pressing after changes to the UK's planning system in the 1990s, especially after the introduction of Planning Policy Guidance 16, Archaeology and Planning, PPG 16. Although PPG 16 is now cancelled, its principles have been carried forward into the current planning framework. It wasn't until 2007, however, that Duncan Brown's Best Practice Guide was produced, which enabled archives to be created and then curated in a usable way in the future. And then more recently, the Archer's European Standard was published. It's worth saying here that as yet, there are no directly equivalent standards in other countries, whereby the same fundamental requirements for archaeological archiving are adopted nationally. As the number of sites being investigated today has soared and the professionalism with which they are delivered has developed, so conversely the role of the museum archaeologist in their practical fieldwork delivery has become increasingly more remote. As many of you will know, there are very few museums that now employ field archaeologists in-house. The size of the product is enormous. The Archaeological Investigations Project suggests more than 80,000 archaeological projects were delivered between 1990 and 2010, and more recent data gathered for Algeo UK shows that over 10,000 archaeological investigations took place in England and Scotland in just one year between 2017 and 2018. Each will have produced an archive that has to be stored somewhere. The profession has had to formulate new strategies and to learn to navigate the way that museums participate in the process. In particular, museums have had to deal with changes to the makeup of the contents of archives so that different skills are required to manage them, particularly with reference to their digital content. Museum curatorial work requires more than managing three-dimensional material or paperwork in boxes. 
it also involves managing the relationships with other organisations involved in the process, such as the Archaeology Data Service. It's important to emphasise here that no museum in the UK has the capacity to adequately collect and curate born digital material in such a way that it might continue to be accessed in the future, and this has become an increasingly significant issue. One of the most important aspects of the work that SMA and others have been doing has been to gather data on the size and nature of the problem the sector faces and to use it to advocate for change. Museums had long warned about the pressure on storage space even before the advent of PPG 16. One of the major issues it reported to a ministerial inquiry in 2014 was the disconnect that exists between the duties placed upon local planning authorities by NPPF which requires information to be made publicly accessible and for archives to be deposited with a local museum or other public depository, especially where there is no statutory requirement to do so. Quantifying the problem to government and others was made possible by the Edwards Report in 2012 and then a series of annual surveys commissioned by Historic England and delivered by SMA. The reports were compiled using gate data gathered by online survey from more than 200 respondents in England that represent museums which collect or hold archaeological material. The results relate to the capacity to collect, staff resource and expertise and made stark reading. The results of the three annual surveys broadly concur with the survey undertaken in 2012 which amongst other things had highlighted a possible 9,000 archives being held by commercial units that could not be deposited at an estimated cost to those units of £330,000 per year. Collectively, SMA's annual survey results showed there are many areas of England where archives could not be deposited. Archives were remaining with commercial units in ever increasing numbers. There are annual decreases in the number of museums that collect archives. Budget cuts have led to staff losses and expertise. Archives held by commercial units are not being held in publicly accessible repositories and two thirds of museums currently collecting archives reported their stores would be full in five years or less. Sadly, there is no single overarching body that speaks for or represents all points of view. Nevertheless, it is certain that if our profession wishes to address the challenges it faces, it must do so collaboratively with a wide variety of other organisations. Better communication between the producers and receivers of archives is one of the key requirements for this to happen, as well as the acquisition of a shared understanding of each other's problems. The data SMA collated relating to the current state of collecting in museums began to inform many discussions on the future of museum archaeology collections and the resolution of the problem of undeposited archaeological archives at both a regional and national level. Over 100 archaeologists involved in distant aspects of the process, for example, came together to address this in southwest England to discuss what could be done better from each stakeholder's perspective as part of the Seeing the Light of Day project. In 2017, a series of workshops was organised by the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists in partnership with and funded by Historic England as part of the 21st Century Challenges for Archaeology project, with the first workshop addressing new models for archive creation, deposition, storage access and research. Nationally, Historic England convened an Archaeological Archives Advisory Group and responded along with many others to the Mendoza Review, an independent review of museums in England, which was undertaken in response to the Culture White Paper 2016. The review outlined key recommendations relating to government support for the museum sector in England. Importantly, one of its requirements was for Historic England to produce recommendations to improve the long term sustainability of archives generated by the developer funded process. Significantly, the work to deliver these recommendations enabled SMA to provide a definition of a publicly accessible repository, which is referenced in the NPPF, but without specifying its characteristics. 
SMA's definition covers accessibility both physically and intellectually and says that in order for these collections to remain publicly accessible, they should be managed by staff with professional expertise appropriate to their care and display, but also have the ability to unlock their potential for a wide variety of people. The latter is especially important since safeguarding the collection for the future is not simply a matter of cataloguing its contents and providing a secure location with the correct environment. It is also about acquiring and disseminating accumulated knowledge, the delivery of inspirational engagement opportunities and collection development by individuals properly qualified to do so. As a direct result of the Mendoza review, Historic England, Arts Council England, SMA and others developed an action plan to address the challenge of sustainable management of archaeological archives. This was subsequently endorsed by Michael Ellis, Minister for Arts, Heritage and Tourism. Key features of the plan, as listed on Historic England's website, are investigating the potential for national or regional repositories, understanding and promoting access and use of archives, clarifying issues of ownership and title transfer, exploring sensible charging frameworks, increasing the focus on retaining only what is truly significant and exploring new technologies and methods of storage. Many of the actions specified in the plan have begun to bear fruit, not least of which is the ongoing Options for Sustainable Archaeological Archives project, which is designed to assess strategic options for the ongoing issue of storing archives. The options appraisal will, according to its publicity, review existing and future capacity for archaeological archives within England, considering a full range of archive solutions and evaluating the potential of each to meet the needs of archive creators, managers and users. Nevertheless, SMA's definition of a publicly accessible repository will have to be met by whatever solutions are found. Significant inroads have been made with advice on how to handle the digital archive with the development of up-to-date guidance, and which also underlines the premise that museums without core trusted seal accreditation are not trusted digital repositories and not equipped to store digital data in perpetuity. Other practitioners have also taken action. For example, Algeo investigated the relationship between national planning policy and the production of archives and what planning archaeologists might realistically contribute to the solution. Mindful of the loss of archaeological expertise across the museum sector, SMA realised there was an increasing number of non-specialists curating archaeological collections and that access to training and specialist knowledge was required. In response to this, SMA successfully applied for Arts Council funding to deliver the Society of Museum Archaeology Resources and Training or SMART project. The aims of the project were threefold. Firstly, to update existing out-of-date guidelines and produce new online standards, guidance and resources readily accessible via the SMA website. Secondly, to enable museum staff and volunteers to develop skills to work with archaeological collections proactively and confidently. And thirdly, to connect non-specialist museum staff with those that have subject specialist expertise in order to facilitate knowledge exchange and thereby strengthen expertise. The guidance, which was published in April 2020, takes the form of separate packages of information, all of which are free to download. A series of regional workshops were also delivered, which introduced participants to the multiple ways that archaeology collections can be managed to best effect and used to engage and inspire people of all ages beyond the medium of display. Subject matter included best practice in the management, use and understanding of collections, the transfer and accessioning of archaeological archives, effective participation in the treasure process and how archaeology can be used for community engagement, learning and volunteer projects. The workshops were aimed at museum staff with little or no specific expertise in archaeology. A mentorship scheme was also trialled in the southeast of England to provide one to one training and advice for museum staff with no archaeological experience, which will hopefully be extended across the UK. The results of the SMART project, SMA surveys and reports are all available to download from our website, 
where you'll also be able to find details of how to join the society and you don't have to work in a museum to do so. Thank you for listening. Thank you.